Welcome everyone and happy Friday. Welcome to Friday Faith Sharing. My name is Deacon Joe and I'm the Deacon at Holy Cross Catholic Church in beautiful Santa Cruz, California. Today we are joined by Alyssa Beltran, one of our younger ministers at Holy Cross. She is a cantor. She's also studying music at San Jose State and this will be her second time reflecting with us. So Alyssa, please unmute yourself and say hello to all the wonderful people at home. Hi everyone, it's nice to see you virtually, or rather you'll see me, but it's nice to be back. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Awesome. Um, so how's school going right now? How, you know, how is it right now being a musician via Zoom and studying music via Zoom? Um, it's been an interesting learning process doing school over Zoom, definitely, especially with music. I do have one in-person thing where I'm playing in a Baroque music ensemble that I'm going to on Friday. So that'll be like my one in-person thing with masks outdoors and no wind instruments or singing because that's not allowed. Um, and yeah, it's it's been a it's been an experience <laughs> to say the least. Yeah. As as a voice major, what are you doing in the Baroque or orchestra? Uh well. I was admitted as viola, so I started to get involved in viola stuff before I switched to voice. So I just do that group to kind of keep up my instrumental skills, I guess. And yeah, voice lessons are weird because we have to do it over like Zoom and this thing called Clean Feed. Um, and so it's kind of like slightly delayed, but delayed not too bad because you can still communicate over over the internet, but it's it's interesting for sure. It'll give us, um, we've all been working a lot more on skills to teach virtually, which I think is a cool thing you're learning as an education major is here's all these resources and new programs they've made so you can work with kids online. And that's wonderful because so much, I know all my teacher friends right now are just learning on the fly and it's so hard for everyone. So it's good that you're getting the school, the, the tools and the skills now. Mm -hmm. As someone who could only ever play maybe the first chords of Smoke on the Water on guitar, I am always envious and in awe of uh, multi-instruments, multi-instrumentalists like you. Thank you. So let us take a moment to be quiet together and to prepare ourselves to hear God's holy and eternal word. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. This is a reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white such as no fuller on earth could bleach them. Then Elijah appeared to them along with Moses, and they were conversing with Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus in reply, Rabbi, it is good that we are here. Let us make three tents, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He hardly knew what to say. They were so terrified. Then a cloud came, casting a shadow over them. And from the cloud came a voice. This is my beloved son. Listen to him. Suddenly, looking around, they no longer saw anyone but Jesus alone with them. As they were coming down from the mountain, Jesus charged them not to relate what they had seen to anyone, except when the Son of Man had risen from the dead. So they kept the matter to themselves, questioning what rising from the dead meant. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Okay, let's see. Where should I start with that one? 
First off, I love this reading and I think it's a really cool story. I really like, well not story, but reading. I really like the line. I was really getting into what the tent meant because he talks about, um, let us make three tents. And so I kind of had to do some Googling to figure out what that meant. And what Peter was saying was like, let's kind of make a shrine. And what I kind of got from that was that he was in like shock because all of a sudden he went on this long hike in, with Jesus and then he kind of was like tired, probably exhausted. I don't know if you've ever been on a long hike, but you know, it's kind of surreal. Like you lose track of time, especially living in Santa Cruz. We're always among the redwoods and everything's beautiful and you're tired, but you keep going because you don't want to get stuck in the woods. And so I kind of thought that line about like, let us make tents was almost like comedic where he was like, I don't really know what to say here. These, you know, this prophet came and I, I don't really know what to make of it. Like, what am I supposed to think? So he was kind of just like in shock at this moment. And he kind of wanted to like capture it, you know, like we do with our phones and everything, saving, saving memories, wanting it to last for a while. And I, I just thought that was very interesting it was like he just wanted to kind of live in that moment, but we don't get to live in the moment. It, time goes on, we go back to normal life. And so I was kind of thinking about how you go to mass every week if you're, you know, if you've been good about going to mass. COVID's kind of a weird time for that, but you think about going to mass every week and when you leave mass, you need to bring that positivity, that light, that compassion to those people around you. Um, looking back more at the, the color white, I really, this reading says a lot about um, Jesus being transformed, which is, it's the transfiguration reading, and talking about how he was, you know, all transformed in this dazzling white color, and it's reflecting what's inside because he chose to present himself as a normal person. He didn't seek out attention because he wanted people to genuinely see him for who he is. So I was kind of thinking about situations in my life when you sort of judged people on their outward appearances or you had them judge, um, judge you on your appearance and I was kind of thinking about how often that has happened to me and like, and to other people and how that true value in someone is how they treat other people, um, how they go out of their way to do these acts of kindness, these acts of compassion and like how all of life is, in my opinion, is just how nice of a person can I be? How can I help someone else? That's kind of how I try and live because I'm studying to be a music teacher and that's not, it doesn't pay the most money, but it's uh, something I really love and care about. And I think making a difference in people's life is definitely to me more valuable and kind of what I want to be remembered as, which is, you know, how I see Sister Barbara is like, I, you know, I will always think of her as like the person who inspired me to want to teach music and to help others. Um, let's see, going off from that, I had another follow-up. So I was going to tell a story about my confirmation. So I was confirmed in, let's see, 2014. So I was looking at, um, I had the late Bishop Garcia do my confirmation, which was very special because he was, you know, so such a such a lovely person. He actually wrote me a college recommendation letter, so I have that still with me on file. Um, I almost quit my confirmation process. I don't know if I've ever told anyone this really, but I was in a group um, with you know people from Holy Cross, people from public schools, everything in my group, and I did have a couple of my friends leave confirmation because they weren't really getting along with the group. And I was just thinking like, that is such a, as a Catholic, how would you want to come to be confirmed and try and like dissuade people 
from your age group from wanting to like continue and I don't know so it was really hard for me to stick with confirmation and like make it through when my friends left the program because they weren't comfortable and I had um I wrote my letter about that to the bishop actually was like with me a lot to keep going on this not give up to realize that it's about me and my relationships and I was just thinking about that um those external forces that try and prevent you from doing things and how you have to keep persisting. So I'm not gonna say that I'm my faith was tested like, you know, the apostles, because it, it wasn't that extreme, but a more low, low key scale. That's kind of um, what I was thinking about in that. Um, and also I was thinking about how confirmation is just, you always get told that like, oh, confirmation's one of the later sacraments because then you have marriage or, you know, priesthood or all of that. But it's really the beginning of things. Like, I feel like only once you've been confirmed are you starting to understand really how things work, you know. And, you know, same with baptism, all of the um, other sacraments. They're like steps, but you kind of have to continually revisit them and keep working on it and not let anyone else dissuade you from your path and that's yeah that's that's what I was I was thinking about um let's see going off of that I also think of um things that we base our foundation of our life on so I talked a lot about um, wanting my life to be meaningful to me. And so I think about a lot of people that base their lives off of money or power or how many likes they get on social media. And I also like the saying of like, money doesn't follow us to our death, which is totally true because, you know, what really matters is the way you act in your life the memories, the way you want to be remembered. Also, I was thinking about transfiguration songs because I really love transfiguration songs. If you have not listened to them, there's a really good one by Ricky Manilow that I think might be on the, the, the list this week, as Robert does. But like the first verse goes like this. Jesus on the mountain peak stands alone in glory blazing let us if we dare to speak join the saints and angels praising and then there's another one um that's by bob hurd that i also like this one that goes um transfigure us O lord transfigure us O lord break the chains that bind us speak your healing word and where you lead will follow transfigure us O oh lord so if you haven't listened to the full versions of those songs highly recommend um looking that up for sure but i was kind of just thinking about this whole process of transfer or transfiguration and so that even if we have this beautiful experience say like your confirmation, just your daily mass, we need to find ways as people to bring that sort of positive message into our daily life, which kind of goes into how every song at the end of mass is about taking the word of God with you and bringing it into the world. And I think Lent is really a time to also reflect on how we can be better people, even if we're not giving up anything or adding anything in, just finding ways to bring that light to others. Amen. Alyssa, thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for sh for your sharing so much, including your personal stories and music, uh, deeply appreciated. I like that you center your, your thoughts and your meditations upon this on this idea that we have to not ever settle in our religion, but if when we have a sacramental moment, when we have an, an encounter with God, what we're supposed to do is come off the mountain, 
go out of the church and bring it to other people. Mm -hmm. I think you see, I think there's a lot of wisdom in what you're saying. Thank you. So Alyssa, thank you again for joining us today. And for all of you who are watching, thank you for being on this journey with us as we go over scripture and think about the way that God's word works throughout our days and throughout our lives. Everyone have a blessed weekend.